From savings to wealth creation, how can you plan for a brighter future with prudent investments? Well, Indian's approach towards investing has traditionally been conservative. And you know, there's this little joke that goes on that says that for, for every investment that you have, you have a couple of FDs as backup. But what we've been seeing is a shift in investment attitudes over the past few years. And it's often said that whether you're investing in equities or digital gold or cryptocurrencies, there are fundamentals that need to be considered while investing. Now, are these fundamentals changing? That's what we are going to find out today to discuss more about a brighter future for all of us with uh, prudent investments. Please welcome Nishal Shetty, the CEO of Wazir X. Hi, Nishal. Thanks for joining us here on Business Insider India. Hey, thanks a lot for having me here. And please also welcome Nikhil Kamat, the co-founder of Zero Da and True Bacon. Thank you so much for joining us here again. Hi. Hi, guys. Lovely. Uh, happy Diwali to all of you and all those of you who are watching us here on uh, Business Insider India. It's good to have you join us here while the rest of the country is getting into the groove for celebrating the season, or so to speak. Uh, let's start off talking about investing trends in India. Now, how are Indian youth? And I'm talking about people who are just out of college, perhaps first time job seekers. Um, how are they looking at investments given the absolute abundance and plethora of options that are available out there? Um, Nikhil? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think uh, younger people are actively participating in the financial ecosystem today. Uh, be it through someone like us uh, coming into stock markets or coming in through people like Nishtil and, you know, trading cryptocurrency and stuff like that. Uh, uh, younger millennials and, you know, the Gen Zs have definitely come to the conclusion that money left in a bank account as a FT or in their savings account uh, no longer really uh, beats inflation. I'm talking about uh, pragmatic on the ground inflation and not the disclosed numbers. So a lot more people are participating and uh, this trend, according to me, will probably continue. Uh, we see very low penetration in India, even today, uh, with equity markets having about two, two and a half percent of the population of the country who has direct or indirect access. I think this number will go up uh, significantly with time. Uh, Mr. Yeah, I think, um, and I, I agree with uh, what Nikhil says. And I think, I, you know, um, inflation has always been there. But I think the awareness around that, uh, the fact, because nowadays you just uh, keep hearing the term inflation, I think people are just more aware of the fact that uh, keeping your money uh, just lying aside is actually, you're not, you're not saving it or forget earning more. You're not even saving what you have the capital you're actually losing it to inflation i think that uh, that awareness is in a way better financial education in the country which is uh, pushing the youth to get into new investment options and uh, crypto definitely i think this is the largest demographic which is the 20 to 30 year old um, probably because it's new and uh, you know maybe the young young people they they are attracted to uh, shiny new things and that's why we are seeing such a large demographic out here um, the same 40 year old and uh, you know crypto will be then full of them but now yeah it's it's just full of uh, young people um, so i think uh, it's a good good time uh, to be um, you know getting into uh, such innovative sectors like crypto because uh, you have that early more advantage you are first to the scene and um, that's what people are taking advantage of i think I, let's stay with the word shiny things. I really want you to dissect that a little bit more. India's crypto numbers are shooting, right? The number of exchanges are going. I mean, after you guys just, you know, kind of set the domino rolling. I mean, you know, every other day you have people who are trying to emulate the kind of success that you guys initially got when you started off. Um, tell me more about this shiny new thing. I mean, we're talking about money, right? We're not talking about a game of Uno. This is not like, you know, it, this has actual value. It's hard earned. Tell me more about this fascination that is driving people towards crypto. Sure, I think, uh, you know, it's uh, all about uh, faster and easier access. Uh, and if you think about uh, crypto, it's the fastest and the easiest way for you to get in. I mean, we exchanges exist, but you don't really need an exchange also. You can just download an app and a friend can send you. In fact, my entry into crypto was like that. A friend said, why don't you try Bitcoin? And I said, I don't have. And, and you know, he just sent it. Of course, this was 2012. Uh, no friend will send you Bitcoin anymore. 
but uh, you know I, I think it's just easy you know you download and you get it and uh, that easiness is what like now you're talking about gifting crypto on dhanteras or diwali yeah. Yeah. why is that is because uh, it's easy to gift it and it's also something that starts a conversation i mean if i was to gift let's say gold to my friend he'll be like okay I, i've got some more gold uh, if i give crypto to someone who's uh, never been into crypto i'm going to be getting a lot of follow up questions he would want to know more and understand what this is and i think uh, that is uh, you know it's just the unknown stock markets and no offense to anything but we all have heard of it for so many years and suddenly now you have something new uh, it's like that new app that you're looking for nobody wants to go to facebook anymore and that's a new app everyone wants to sign up so i think that's what is happening in crypto it's just you know it's interesting and it's new and everyone wants to understand it that that's interesting are you telling me that effectively the user experience funnel to use a very bangalore startup app jargon is largely pushing people towards crypto and that's 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 a key thing yeah absolutely of course uh, not to forget there's also one more uh, uh, funnel called fomo uh, which is also driving everyone into it but i think uh, the 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 user experience the ease of use ease of access the global nature of this uh, and the media there's so much of information around crypto it's the talk of the town i think that's all pushing people into this you know we talk about fomo i should also tell you about dyor it's called do your own research you will hear a lot of things about equities and and bitcoins and cryptocurrencies but as somebody who is investing you should do your own research and that's a disclaimer that we say all the time and that's something that you should keep in mind uh, nikhil i want you to i want i want to pick your brains on this how do you reason out the fascination of the world of crypto i mean stock stock markets have been there for for centuries uh, it's a known beast or so to speak but crypto is shiny on all practical sense of the word but for somebody who's been you know changing the way people are looking at you know investing in equities and and revisioning their experience uh, how are you reading crypto well i give a contrary opinion on this sometimes you know when i especially when i talk to nishil and uh, the next time we're on a panel together it's like gone up another 10000 And I remember the last time I spoke to him, he gave me a wallet and stuff. I wish I had bought some cryptocurrencies, but unfortunately, I did not. Well, see, I think the ease of use in in some way also comes from the fact that you know, from a regulation side, things around crypto are quite lax. Uh, there is no uh, when you compare it to say equity markets, you know, you need to do a KYC, you need to know that. person's uh, credit score you need to know where the money is coming from where it's going into there's a lot of uh, regulation around the stock markets which today is not uh, the same around crypto markets uh, i think that will have to reach parity at some point uh, like just making a, a a guess or a wager based on logic i would i would assume that if a citizen of the country has two avenues to invest in and uh, the regulation around each one of them is significantly different uh, that might not last for a long time and they will achieve parity at some time uh, that being said i do see the use case for crypto i see why it could become uh, an effective tool to both uh, store and transfer money from point a to point b uh, not just the underlying technology but the fact that uh, Uh, to a large extent it is un uh, confiscatable uh, in a way uh, for the lack of a better word so it will be interesting to see what happens in the future i think the regulatory side is what i would watch out for most because i still feel that in many ways it takes away power from uh, central banks and governments across the world and i wonder if uh, they will fight back at some point of time Well, they'll probably come back with uh, you know central bank uh, digital currency CBDCs. That's mm-hmm. one of the things that's being mulled, and of course the regulation is around the corner. I mean, at least discussions of regulation around the corner. February is what we've been hearing is when you know we're expecting to see something that will be pushed in. So and 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 this is you've been pretty you know in the sense that you know vocal about the fact that you're welcoming regulation and you want to see regulation um so so that's something that you are still looking forward to right and since so what do you expect in the first wave of regulations just to stay with the conversation on regulations i think uh, look uh, regulations for crypto is not straightforward and which is also one of the reason why uh, most of the nations around the world haven't been able to regulate it yet um 
so and it'll be the same in india because um, the existing regulations we have are broken down into regulations for currency is different from regulation for securities uh, and commodities have a different one and crypto tends to have qualities of all of them based on what sort of crypto is created like if you look at bitcoin and if you think let's say a uh, securities regulator should regulate but then bitcoin is seen as an asset class and it does not really have a company operating and giving you profits every year so so it's very different same with ethereum which is a utility token so i i think uh, at least in terms of regulation the first step would be guidelines and uh, guidelines around the companies that uh, service people like us uh, exchanges and wallets and all and they'll be uh, mandated to for example do some of these uh, uh, act, uh, the same checks and balances that uh, traditional financial systems do but like you're already doing that nonetheless yeah yeah which which all of us are already doing but maybe more stringent uh, maybe you know uh, there will be there are nuances around it so those things will happen and i think that's the first step and there's a right step like just release guidelines if if a government uh, anywhere in the world is trying to regulate crypto and waiting for that uh, final bill to come i think it'll be a long long time because uh, uh, look at the internet i mean what do you mean when you say you want to regulate the internet you can't regulate the internet you only regulate parts of it so and even now we don't have proper regulation around it so i think guidelines and some do's and don'ts for companies that's probably the first step that will happen in india and everywhere else that, that that's absolutely fascinating because i really want to talk a little bit more about uh, the fact that we don't have concrete guidelines is something that is having a lot of people question whether they should be investing in this it still it pushes them into far more traditional instruments like you know like the stock markets or you know fixed deposits uh, and and a question that we get very 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 often is that how much should i invest in crypto in the sense that we are not we are not certified financial advisors uh, and the financial advisors themselves are caught in this rut saying that how do i guide people as to how much they should invest in crypto but a question to all you know both of you out here is that what are some of the good essentials to consider and keep in mind if they do want to you know start investing into you know new age financial instruments like like cryptocurrencies uh nikhil yeah i mean see it depends again on who is investing the age the risk profile of the person but considering the inherent uh, volatility one can associate with crypto coins uh, i would assume it would be prudent not to do more than you know 5% or 6% of one's own portfolio in my opinion okay uh nikhil nishal i'm <laughs> uh, sorry nishal sorry yeah <laughs> no i i think uh i agree with uh, nick see uh, end of the day crypto is a high risk high return investment and uh, um, whatever is the percentage that you believe is for that high risk category that you want to keep i think out of that percentage you could get into crypto as an investor that's a that's a better approach and uh, just don't get in, into it because uh, you know you know you've traded in some other instrument this is a very different domain just because you use money and you buy it doesn't mean it's the same thing uh, there's a lot of difference first is like you said it's unregulated and that's mm -hmm. definitely something that you should be aware of having said that uh, when you were talking about you know regulated and unregulated it feels a lot like if you look at our financial institutions for example uh, the schools and colleges everything regulated uh, and online education completely unregulated but when you when you look at the value that uh, you're deriving out of both of these kind of uh, institutions it completely uh, on par internet education now is growing faster you know crypto in a similar way it does not mean it's bad uh, of course regulation will help it a lot but i, I think uh, you need to take that risk but be sure this is high risk and high return i think uh, that has to be at the top of your mind when you get into crypto uh, it's volatile nikhil said last time it was lower this time is higher and maybe next one he'll say i said <laughs> i told you so you know it's lower now <laughs> so yeah it can go anyway how does how does one research crypto initial like how do i know when to buy so i'll i'll tell you <laughs> things, but of course uh, to to whatever i tell you there will be uh, examples of uh, uh, that not applying to that crypto and still being uh, one of the best written in crypto uh, the first thing is look uh, what is happening in crypto uh, right now is it's at the infrastructure level where infrastructure that is needed for a post crypto world is being built and what i mean by that is uh, i'll give you an example if i'm a software developer and i want to create a bank in india or anywhere in the world um i can't do it just by writing code i'll have to get licenses i'll have to incorporate companies i'll have to do a lot uh, but in crypto the idea is a developer somewhere will be able to create a bank 
using all of the protocols that are being built today. And this bank can be created in 10 minutes. And these protocols are like savings and uh, loans. All of these protocols exist for you. So it's a lot like how you build websites today as a developer. You don't have to think. That's what will happen. Now, all the companies that are building these protocols have their own tokens. And, and you as an investor have to think whether this particular token is going to be part of that future of crypto uh, uh, banks and crypto institutions. Now, uh, having said that, you have to research into the backgrounds of the founders, what the protocol exactly is, all of that. But if you were to apply this to, let's say, Shiba Inu, which is now like uh, the top seven token, nobody knows who the founders are. Nobody knows what it is being built for exactly because it started as a joke coin. So there are always these uh, outliers. But in general, most of the protocols are being built for a reason. They want to be part of that whole financial institution that can be created by software developers ar around the world. You know, Nikhil, a couple of days back, we had an AMA along with Nistel and um, somebody asked us, can I create my own crypto coin? And, um, you know, we had Nistel who said that Look, the answer is yes, it's very easy to create your own crypto coin. Having said that, would uh, Zeroda be in interested in uh, having your own crypto coin? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like the amount of regulation we have, we are, we are more people who don't take chances because we're already, you know, doing something with SEBI and RBI and all the different bodies, right? We are like, why take a chance and do something that they might not like? But uh, who knows in the future, we'll see, but no plans or anything as such. Uh, anything to do with crypto right now, there is absolutely no plan. You know, the fact that it's such a low barrier of entry to create your own crypto coin and initial, do you think that could become a potential headache for exchanges like you in the future with every celebrity deciding to have their own crypto coin and every organization out there saying that, look, I'm going to have my own crypto coin out there. Do you, do you smell a potential problem there? A good problem, in a, so to speak, but still. I, I, I smell opportunities. Uh, there are like 12,000 cryptos already and we list what, 150 or 200 of them. Uh, and it's never, it's a lot like, you know, your websites, anyone can create, there are millions of websites. I won't be surprised if there will be millions of tokens. I think there will be, uh, because it's so easy and anyone can do it and everyone should do it. Uh, as an exchange, our, our objective is to bring tokens that uh, our customers demand and uh, what our customers want. And that will never be in the thousands or maybe, you know, a few hundreds people trade in them. Out of those hundreds also, I think 10 to 20 tokens are probably what get traded the most. So, so for us, it's it's about uh, picking from uh, the vast ocean out there, and that's what our job is. Uh, so it's okay, I think. Well, more co tokens and tokens which are specialized, which effectively talk about how cryptocurrency is now being used to do specialized things. Now, one thing that's common between both of you and your companies is that you've been fintech disruptors of sorts, both Azirex and Zeroda are making headways in domains using technology. And you were able to read the radar, you know, you were able to look at the radar and read the trends and pivot your business into these uh, to where you are today. Uh, what are some of the more interesting innovations that you are expecting from the Indian fintech sector? Something that you're personally looking forward to, something that you are getting up to uh, Nikhil? Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a candid personal view. I think people are fairly deluded today, uh, both entrepreneurs, listed companies, people investing in them. Uh, valuations have kind of lost touch with reality, right? Like nobody knows why somebody is buying something. Somebody buys something because they heard their friend bought something and it was it went up fifty percent. So it's it's a crazy time. Like if you look at uh, Forget crypto, right? I mean, I'm not, I don't, don't even want to go there because I'm no big expert. Even that seems extremely overinflated. But if you look at uh, companies that are listed, you're seeing like manufacturing companies trading at 150 times forward earnings. Uh, you look at Tesla, right? I mean, they, they do like revenues of $30 billion or whatever. They're trading at $1.3 trillion valuation. Right? Why is a car company worth 300 times uh, or 400 times, not even their profit number, but their revenue number? It doesn't make sense. Uh, if you were to go back in time and try to value companies uh, relative to their earnings, it would be fair to say that most asset classes today have lost their mind and they're in one bubble or another. Now, that being said, when does this change? When does when do things go back to normalcy or the historical multiples? Nobody can really call it. I feel uh, the value in of money itself is getting deflated. 
you know, historically, if you put an excess amount of a certain commodity in the market, the value of that commodity would probably go down. Uh, not happening with the dollar right now, you know, like they printed what, $11 trillion in the last 18 months or the last couple of years. Uh, the value of the dollar logically, mathematically, I think should have gone down, but it is supported for many reasons, uh, favoring different nations and uh, different corporations across the world. But what I what I think might be happening in the background is the value we attribute to dollar in our own minds is going down uh, to the extent of 30-40%. So even, even though you look at stock prices, crypto prices, asset classes at a certain level, I think the inherent value of the currency we're using to evaluate it in itself has kind of depreciated, but the mark to mark is not done on the market in a way. That is a lot to fathom in, in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nishal, what are you looking forward to? I know DeFi is something that's exciting for you because you've already gone into the NFT space. Uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, I think. Uh... Uh, DeFi is definitely something that uh, I think uh, India is going to see a lot more companies being built up. Uh, it wasn't happening a few years ago because of a variety of reasons of banking restriction being the biggest. But the last uh, 12 to 18 months, we've seen a lot of new startups emerging from India uh, who are building into DeFi. Uh, the, the, the thing about these startups have been that they focus on the global market because the India market was small. So now what is happening because now we have about uh, 15 to 20 million people in India into crypto. Now I'm, I'm hearing ideas around uh, DeFi for the Indian audience. So that wasn't uh, existent before. So that's going to be one new trend, uh, which is uh, building crypto products and services for Indian audiences. Before this, if it was for India, it was only an exchange. That's why you only saw exchanges. Now it'll be decentralized products. Like we launched our NFT platform that was decentralized, but again, focus only on India. So that's one. The other thing that I'm the most excited about is uh, DAOs, these, uh, you know, decentralized autonomous organizations, uh, because this allows you to create and uh, go uh, go to market without needing a company. It's it's completely decentralized. Uh, you give the community the uh, power to run the protocols. And I think uh, is the future of how companies will be built. Um, you just see how difficult it is to set up a company, maintain it, manage it. I think uh, as a software developer, I would love the idea of a DAO where uh, it's just pure code that creates a company. And uh, that's going to be massive, I think, in the future. Uh, for example, you're seeing now a bunch of people on the internet who do not even know each other getting together, creating a DAO to buy these NFTs. So let's say you, you wanted to buy a very expensive NFT and uh, it's beyond the budget. You join a DAO, you pull your money together, and you buy it and you don't need any uh, physical company. You don't need any physical contracts. It's all happening purely online. And there's, there's no need of trust. No one can run away with that pulled in money. So that's the beauty of DAOs. Uh, you know, I think, I think I'm a big fan and I think uh, the time for DAOs is approaching. So we'll see some uh, really large DAOs getting created. And I hope from India, we see a few happening. And that conversation on DAO has been active on Business Insider as well. We had a conversation with uh, the MakerDAO team a couple of days back. And uh, Nikhil, talking about decentralized finance, what are your thoughts on that? Well, nothing nothing interesting that I can add to what Nishil was saying. Uh, I think uh, the very premise of uh, Bitcoins and blockchain and all kind of like works favorably towards uh, uh, decentralized finance and platforms around that. Uh, the 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 main thing, you know, I am looking at from my point of view, wherever I sit today is, you know, uh, uh, people have to be extremely cautious of uh, a lot that is being sold in the world today in a manner that uh, is very cool and is like the flavor of the season and not not buy into these things at a point where, you know, they don't, they're not able to justify the valuation, but they're buying it just because, you know, everybody's talking about it and these things sound really cool in the media and stuff like that. So uh, I'm, I'm a fairly conservative guy yeah, when it comes to inv investment of any sort. <laughs> I, I think, I think that's fairly evident in the conversations one has with me. So I, I kind of am advising people to, you know, go back to basics look at how much profitability which company is creating and if it seems too expensive uh, stay away from it 
Awesome. And uh, on that note, I'm going to end our conversation with uh, a little fun question, really. Um, and I'll start with you, uh, Nikhil. If you had to explain what cryptocurrencies are to a, you know, a fairly uh, traditional 70-year-old stocks and MF investor, how would you go about it or would you just brush it away? Very hard because I don't totally understand it, I think, myself. But let me attempt it. Uh, I would say, if you have to take money from here, और किसी को नहीं बताना है सबसे आसान तरीका है तो यू मेड दैट साउंड कंप्लीटली डुबियस इन वन शॉट व्हाट अबाउट यू नेचर आ अबाउट क्रिप्टो या सी आई थिंक इन क्रिप्टो टू एन ओल्ड पर्सन यस या या आई हैव हैड दिस बिफोर टू देम व्हाट आई टेल देम इज दैट यू नो देयर इज ऑलवेज समथिंग न्यू दैट कम्स फर्स्ट इट वाज ऑफलाइन कंपनीज एंड दे वर वैल्यूड एट एक्स and then you had internet startups where you know they themselves did not believe that these startups should be valued at that high like you know 10x 20x more than what they were earning and now uh, there's something that beats these startups which is crypto in terms of valuations you know if the startups are 10x these crypto valuations are 100x so i just talk about uh, in terms of progress uh, i think it was offline companies then startups and now there is something even more rapidly growing which is crypto Awesome. <laughs> on that note, it's been a delightful <laughs> chat with you, gentlemen, <laughs> on this um, Wednesday morning. Um, Nikhil, Mitchell, gentlemen, it's been a delight to have you both back with us here on Business Insider in India. And we'll, of course, continue to engage with you to understand more about how you're reading the tea leaves and what are your fundamentals that you are reworking and putting together for all of us to look at and really fine tune our opinions and thoughts towards how we should be investing. Happy Diwali to you and to your organizations. Happy Diwali. And uh, we'll join you back soon. Thanks. Right. Thanks. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.